then we're going to, uh, like I said, do some homework. Okay. So the first, the first issue we want to address today is the notion of coterminal angles. Now, I do not know if I have talked about that word, if I've actually used that word before. I know we've run into the concept. Does anybody have a guess what coterminal angles are? Let me give you an example. 300 and negative 60 would be coterminal angles. Now think about what 300 looks like. You know what 300 looks like, right? 300 looks like this? Okay. Now, if that's 300, tell me about negative 60. What would that look like? It's not the same exact angle, but it ends up in exactly the same place. So if I were to identify, let's say we make our perpendicular, make our triangle, this side would be negative root 3, and this side would be 1, and this side would be 2. So if I said, what's the sine of 300, you would say the sine of 300 is negative root 3 over 2. But if I said, what's the sine of negative 60, wouldn't you say exactly the same thing? Because they are in the same place. They create the same triangle. So all of their trig functions will be the same. The cosine will match. The tangent will match because they're in the same spot. They make the same triangle. So if I said to you, give me an angle coterminal with 200, could you do that? Could you name an angle that would be in exactly the same spot as 200 degrees? This is 200 degrees. Can you think of an angle that would be in exactly the same spot? Negative 160. Is that the only one? Is that the only other angle we could possibly draw? It is correct, negative 160. But is that the only one? No? 560. 560? Where did that come from? Uh, go all the way around. One. Exactly. If you went all the way around and then another 200, that would be 560, right? And wouldn't you end up in exactly that same spot? Are there any others, or are those the only two? Just keep going, 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 going. The idea here is that if you want a coterminal angle, all you have to do is take your given angle and either add 360 to it or subtract 360 to it and keep doing that. If you, were, like, if you wanted 15 coterminal angles, just take your original and just keep adding 360s or subtracting 360s. Does that make sense? So if we have a, a question sometime that says, name a positive and negative coterminal angle for, let's say, uh, let's just use 100 degrees. Could you name a positive coterminal angle for 100 degrees? Yeah, all you have to do is what? Subtract, Subtract or add 360. If I want it to be positive, then I'm going to add 360. So what would a positive coterminal angle be? 460. If I want a negative one, I will subtract 360. So my negative coterminal angle would be negative 260. What if we're in radians? What if the angle is, oh, let's say um, pi over 7? What if we're in radians? What do you 
think we will do for radians? Now, you could change it to degrees and then do everything that we've been doing. But without changing it to degrees, what do you think we might do? Add or subtract 180? No. What's special about 360? When we say we're going to add and subtract 360, what's 360? 360 is a revolution, right? If you want coterminal angles, you have to add or subtract a revolution. So if we're in radians, We'll add and subtract a revolution, but it won't be 360, it will be 2 pi, just 2 pi, just 2 pi. 2 pi radians, you guys, this is fundamental. 2 pi radians is a revolution. 2 pi is the same as 360. So if we want to find coterminal angles for pi over 7, we're going to add revolutions and subtract revolutions, as many as we want. So what would this be? Come on now, we're seniors in high school. We can add. What? Okay, yeah, I know it's first period, it's Friday. Um, you need a common denominator, you guys. You're adding fractions. So this would be 14 sevenths, so 15 pi over 7. What would this one be? Negative 13 pi over 7. You guys, this is, this is 14 sevenths? Yes. So we're just taking 1 seventh and adding 14 sevenths, and 1 seventh <coughs> and subtracting 14 sevenths. Right? How do you get coterminal angles? You add or subtract revolutions. Add or subtract revolutions. If somebody says to you, are pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3, are those coterminal? You will say no, because they are not a revolution apart. To get coterminal angles, you need to add or subtract revolutions. What's the difference between these two angles? three-thirds, that's one-third, that's four-thirds, isn't the difference between them three-thirds? That's pi. Is pi a revolution? No. no, two pi is a revolution. So these are not coterminal, they're like opposite of each other. They're not coterminal. To be coterminal, one more time, what has to be the case? Add or subtract revolutions. If you're in degrees, that means adding or subtracting 360. If you're in radians, it means adding or subtracting 2 pi. Okay. Now, the reason that I um, wanted to make sure we talked about that is because we had a few on our worksheet, but in tonight's homework, there are a bunch of problems that are like this. The secant of um, 27 pi over 4, for example. Now, 27 pi over 4, I want you just to think about that for a second. What is that in terms of a mixed number? 27 fourths. 27 fourths. What is that in a mixed Six. number form? Six and three fourths. Six and three fourths? So this is like finding the secant of 6 and 3 fourths pi. Now, why am I thinking about it like that? Well, this is a big number. Tell me about 6 pi. It's three, it's three revolutions. So if I were going to draw a picture of this angle, I would go around and around and around, right? I don't even care about that. I just care about how much extra I go after I spin. 
how much extra would I be going after I spun? Three-fourths pi? This is six whole pies and three-fourths pi. This is irrelevant. That just spins you around. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to find the secant of three pi over four. Now, will these be the same answer? Absolutely. I'm trying to make this number as small as I can because I'm not going to have a calculator on these exercises, so it really helps me to shrink that angle down. Pi is divided by 4 is 45 times 3 is 135. We know how to do this. So tonight when we do our homework or Monday morning, whenever you do your homework, don't be scared by these big angles. Shrink them down and then they become exactly the same kind of problem that we've been doing for a couple of days. That's the secant of 135, here's 135, the reference angle is 45. So the sides are 1, 1, root 2, anything negative in there? The bottom one. We want the secant, uh, definition of secant, r over, x. r over x, so I got x is negative 1, y is 1, r is root 2, so r over x would be root 2 over negative 1 or negative root 2. Could you have done that without shrinking the angle? Absolutely but you would have had a big giant number that you were working with instead of 135. Okay, all right, that's easy. All right, the next thing we wanna talk about, um, there is a little section in the homework that says something like this. just gives you a random angle function by like cotangent 183 and it says is it positive or negative it doesn't say find it. it doesn't say come up with an actual number just tell me if it's positive or negative any idea how you would answer that question without your calculator just draw it just draw it because it's sine s-i-g-n depends totally on which quadrant it's in right x and y positive or negative so if I draw 183, it's in quadrant 3. I have no idea what these sides are. No idea at all. It doesn't matter. I do know that in quadrant 3, what can you tell me about x and y? R will always be positive. R is always positive. But in quadrant 3, x and y are both negative. Now, what's cotangent by definition? X over, y. x over Y. So X over Y would end up being positive. All right, let's try one more of those. Let's say we have the cosecant um, of 1,000 degrees. Whoa, 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 1,000. Way too big, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to start getting rid of revolutions. I'm going to find a coterminal angle for 1,000. I'm going to get rid of revolutions. So how many revolutions can I get rid of? Two? Two revolutions would be 720. So I can get rid of 720, and this is going to be the cosecant of 280. Where's 280? fourth quadrant. And if I am in the fourth quadrant, tell me what I know about x and y and r in the fourth quadrant. X is positive. Y is negative. R is always positive. I want the cosecant. Y over, well, it's r over y associated with y and since y is negative the cosecant is going to be negative in quadrant.
divided for. That's pretty easy. Yeah, we love trigonometry. It's so easy. All right, let's try one more. What about this problem? The terminal side. I'm going to throw in some vocabulary here. The terminal side of an angle in standard position. contains the point negative 2 comma 3. Find the value of the six true functions for this angle. by six trig functions, you know what we mean, right? We need to find sine, cosine, all those. So I'm going to make my list here. Sine. I'm just going to call the angle theta. I'll line them up with the reciprocals. I'll make it easy on myself. All right, so let's look at this. The terminal side of an angle in standard position. Remember what standard position means. Standard position means that we're starting here, right? So we've got this angle drawn, and its terminal side, that's where it terminates, where it ends, where the angle ends. This is where it ends. This is where it starts. Any idea what this is called? If this is its terminal side, any idea what that is? It's called the initial side. The initial side. And it contains the point negative 2, 3. Now, are you clear on why I put that angle in quadrant 2? Yeah. Where is the point negative 2, comma 3? Quadrant 2. That's why I drew it in quadrant two. It said the terminal side has to contain that point. That means the angle stops in quadrant two. And it contains that point right there. Now, I don't have any idea how big that angle is. I mean, I don't know what this degree measure is. But I can still drop a perpendicular and I can label the sides of this triangle. How long is this? Two. Negative 2. I'm going to go ahead and put the negative in. It is 2 units long. I'm going to make it negative so I don't forget about that. How long is this? Three. How long is this? Three. Four. 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 Yep. Whoever said that over here, Katie Klein, was that you? Root 13. Yeah. You do so well when you're awake. <laughs> Root 13. Now, I still have no idea how big those angles are, but it doesn't matter. If I just want the sign, don't I have enough information right here to get the sign? I know that x is negative 2, y is 3, and r is root 13. x and y were given to me. You figured out root 13 by the Pythagorean theorem. Now, you can just fill in your blanks. What's the sign? 3 over root 13. 3 over root 13 or 3 root 13 over 13, which means the cosecant, flip this one, the cosecant will be root 13 over 3. All right, what about the cosine? What's the cosine? Negative 2 over root 13, which is negative 2 root 13 over 13, and the reciprocal will be negative root 13 over 2. Why isn't it what now? I just say with this negative root 13 over 2, it has to be negative root 13 over 2. Yes, 
where you put the negative is not important. In a fraction, where you put the negative is not important. And what's my tangent? <coughs> negative 3 over 2, so the cotangent is negative 2 over 3. Would you agree that's not too bad? Okay, tonight you're going to get an opportunity to practice some of that. Would you get your packets out? And <coughs> just start turning pages. I think it's the fourth page. It says pre-cal A quiz, basic trig, period five is amazing. It's been the period five. For five years, I only have period five. Yeah. So everything says period five is amazing. Very first problem, this is a good review, kind of to recap, keep things uh, fresh in our minds. Very first problem says, convert 100 degrees to, the ra to radians. We have not done this for forever, like, I don't know, a week. Who remembers how to change 100 degrees into radians? Real easy. Okay, yeah, I say, I always set it up, pi is to 180 as something is to 100, but I think what you said will work too. You had just things rearranged a little bit. Um, this proportion always, always, always works to change degrees into radian. What's the relationship between pi and 180? They're the same. I am looking for this to be the same. Right? What's the same? What matches 100? Pi matches 180. What matches 100? So the answer would be 100 pi over 180. Um, 5 pi over 9, if you reduce. Everybody okay with that? Now we're going backwards, but we've done this a lot because this happens in some of our other problems. If we want to know how many degrees this is, we can just say, okay, I know pi is 180 divided by 6 would be 30 times 7 is 210. So the answer is 210. We've done so many of those because of problems like the very next one says find the tangent of 3 pi over 4. The word exact always means no calculator. So finding the tangent of 3 pi over 4. So the first thing we do is cover that up and say, okay, pi is 180 divided by 4 is 45 times 3 is 135. So we're finding the tangent of 135 degrees. So we draw our circle, 135 in standard position will leave a reference angle of 45. So the sides are 1, 1, root 2, and you're right, that one is negative. So we have a situation where the x is negative 1, the y is 1, and r is root 2. Kids, this is a coordinate plane. This is the x direction. This is the y direction. So x is negative 1, y is 1, r is root 2. We want the tangent. What's tangent? Y over x. So that'll be negative 1. is a little bit scary looking, but not bad. It says I have an angle. Which quadrant is my angle in? Two. two. So I know my butterfly bow tie will be drawn like this. I'm in quadrant two. That's how I draw it. 
the cosine is negative three-fifths. Now, wait a minute. What would that look like in terms of the picture? Five is the hypotenuse. The adjacent would be negative three? Because this says cosine is negative three-fifths. So, okay. What happens next? I need the other side. I absolutely do need the other side to fill in these blanks, right? So the other side, I do the Pythagorean theorem, and it is four. Is that a positive four or a negative four? Positive. Positive. Okay. So what's the sign? You got x equals negative 3, y equals 4, r equals 5. You can do opposite over hypotenuse or y over r. Either way, the sign is 4 fifths, which means the cosecant is 5 fourths. What's my tangent? Negative 4 thirds, which means my cotangent is negative 3 fourths. And my secant, well, shoot, they told me the cosine, right? So I can just flip that over, and that will be my secant. You good with that? Number five, down at the bottom, find one angle coterminal. Well, let's find a few more than one just to get some extra practice. How do we find coterminal angles? Add or subtract a revolution. Now, since this problem is given in degrees, we'll add or subtract 360. So one positive <coughs> coterminal angle would be 420. A negative coterminal angle would be negative 300. If you wanted more, you would just keep adding 360s or keep subtracting 360s, right? And you could come up with as many as you wanted to. Everybody okay with that? All right, let me turn back yesterday's quizzes and let's get our homework out and see if anybody had a question about that. Maggie's still not here. Maggie's still not here. These were 11 point quizzes. I know we have it in power school yet. got this, these basics figured out. Anybody miss something and you just can't figure out why you missed it? 7a. 7a says the sine of 210. So it's kind of like this one I'm erasing right now. We need to draw 210 degrees. So there's 210. There's my butterfly bow tie triangle. If this angle is 210, then how big is my reference angle right here? We shouldn't be struggling with that. No. Here to here is how far? 180. How much past 180 are we going? 30. You're going 30 degrees past 180. Logic. Use your logic. You're going 30 degrees past 180. So this angle is 30 degrees. What's across from the 30? One. 
There are my sides. Anything negative? Negative Both of them are negative, right? So we've got x equal to negative root 3, y equal to negative 1, r equal to 2. Again, gang, this is a coordinate plane. This is x, this is y. Now what do we want? Sine. So what's the definition of sine? Y over r, opposite over hypotenuse. Either way you go, the answer is negative 1 half. Some of you forgot to put those negatives in. I, I can't remind you enough how important it is to stop. After you've drawn your picture, stop and say, are there any negatives? That's just going to mess everything up in the future if we just don't keep, start keeping track of those right now. All right, anything else? Any other question on the paper? just don't understand why you missed it. Emma Bealey, what are you doing back there? Writing your name? What are you doing on your iPad? Okay. All right, we ready? All right, homework. Any questions about homework? Anything about homework that you're just not quite sure about? And I'm just going to take some problems. Cotangent of the angle is 1. All right? Now, we need to stop and think a minute. What is cotangent? By definition. Yeah, it's reciprocal of tangent, which means it is x over y. So I got to think about, first of all, big picture, where will it happen? Remember, you got four possibilities. Where will it happen that if I put x over y, I will get a positive number? Certainly in quadrant 1, because x and y are both positive, so the fraction would be positive. Where else? Quadrant 3. Because in quadrant 3, x and y are both negative, so when I build the fraction, it will come out positive. Now. I'm going to think about that 1 as 1 over 1. That means that my picture would look like this, wouldn't it? Or down here, it would look like this. What would this side be? If that's a 1 and that's a 1, what would this side be? Root 2. Root 2. Those numbers should just like pop out at you, right? What kind of triangle do I have? 45, 45, 90. So this is a 45 degree angle. Is everybody in agreement? So what are the answers to the question? This is also a 45 degree angle. Every time you have multiple answers, these two triangles are going to match. So you never have to redo any work. If that's 45, this one's 45. So one of your answers is 45. Right? What's your other answer going to be? Think about how far it is to here. And then how much past did you go in? So what would it be? 225. Now, those are the degree measures of the angles. I think, if I, I read the directions kind of fast, but didn't it say answer in radians also? So then you're just going to take, we just practiced it, you're going to take this number and you're going to say, okay, pi is to 180 as something is to 45, and you're going to change it into radians. 
I know that's one I use a lot, so I know it's pi over four. And this one is five pi over four. But this is how you would change it. Okay, we got time for one more, then we have to do our, our drawing. I know, isn't that great? All right, any other homework questions? These are probably the hardest kind right here, where you have to find the angle. Okay, so, all right, well, you've got your assignment. A uh, Monday will end the material that's on the exam.